page turners and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matthew, the man with a hat who reads, and it's time to look back at the month that was and the month that is to come. This is my August wrap up September TBR. And September TBR is also the announcement of what I'm reading for sci-fi September because practically everything I picked for this month is sci-fi. It's almost all sci-fi or sci-fi adjacent except for one. But we'll get to that in a minute. And the first thing we always start out with is what was my favorite book of August? So August, I finished 10 books, which is down from July, but August also, I was working on Three Musketeers, and that was a tome. That book was 700 pages, and it did drag at times for me. I did slog along in it a little bit. So slow progress is better than no progress and I did get through a bunch in the last couple days of the month to finish off but my favorite book of August was Matt Ruff's Lovecraft Country I loved every minute of this it got going and I thought it was going one way and then all of a sudden it changed I didn't realize it's essentially a bunch of interconnected short stories really with different characters every story pretty much has a different character we're focusing on and I just loved this. And I'm going to be doing a review video for this book. You'll probably see it next week. That's kind of my plan right now. But this was fantastic. All right. And that puts us for the year at 89 books read so far this year. My goal for the year was 145 again, which is what I read last year. And with every month that passes, that goal becomes less and less likely Looking at it right now, if I was still going to hit the 145 book goal, I did the math, I would need to read about 12 books a month, roughly. 12, 12 and a half, it's something like that. So it's, it's doable, but wait, that doesn't come out right. Hey, 12, so... Okay, that doesn't come out right. Scratch that. I'm not sure exactly how many. It's a number that's less doable than I thought. But let's just keep on moving along as we're going here. So for sci-fi September, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 books here that I'm attempting to read this month. Plus, there's a couple other ones. I think I have an ebook that'll be coming up here in September that I wanted to read, too. I'm playing to read, but it's a short ebook, so it won't be a big deal. But anyway, let's just dive right in here. Starting with this book. This is a carryover. There was two books from last month's TBR I didn't get to. One was Song of Achilles, which I said if I had time, I would do it, and I didn't have time. The other one is Jeannie Koch's Alien in the Family. I talked about this last month. It's essentially sci fi smut. <laughs> That's essentially what it is. I These are guilty pleasure books for me. I They're ridiculous, they're goofy, and I enjoy them. This is the third book in the series. I, re, I, I did have fun with the first two, so I am curious about this one. It's, like I said, it's not high art or anything. It's just a fun, it's just dumb fun sci-fi romantic-y snuff, snuff, I guess is the best way I can say it, so... Moving on, a couple of these are recent acquisitions to my collection that I'm going to squeeze in. You can't do sci-fi September without Star Wars. So this is Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, and the Shadows of Mindor. I haven't read this one. It's part of the Expanded Universe, which is no longer canon because Disney wanted to ruin everything with Star Wars. I'm a little bitter, what can I say? <laughs> And I'm going to try to get this one done early because I want to do a video showcasing my favorite Expanded Universe novels. And I don't know if this one will be on the list, but I want to get to it earlier rather than later. This is set about five years after Return of the Jedi. Oh, five years after A New Hope, my mistake. About a year after Return of the Jedi. Okay, so... I like a lot of the Expand Universe stuff, and Matthew Stover is wrote my favorite Star Wars New Jedi Order novel, Traitor, so I'm very excited to dive into this one. 
I also recently picked up Robert Rapino's Cul-de-Sac. This is a semi-sequel to Mort, which I read last year. And it's a short novella about... Let's see. Bobcat Cul-de-Sac is among the fiercest warriors fighting for the colony. Driven by revenge and notorious for his ability to hunt humans in the wild, Cul-de-Sac is the perfect leader of the Red Sphinx, an elite unit of feline assassins. With the humans in retreat, the Red Sphinx seizes control of the remote village of Milton, but holding the town soon becomes a bitter struggle of wills. As the humans threaten a massive counterattack, the townsfolk protect a dark secret that could tip the balance of the war. Like I said, Mort was bizarre, and I loved it, and I'm very excited to dive back into this. There is a second and third book. Like I said, this is just a novella, so we'll get to that at some point. So next up, this book I've been wanting to read for a long time. It's gotten a lot of buzz from a lot of different booktube accounts, including a lot of them that I follow. This is Christopher Rocchio's Empire of Silence, and yeah, it's a big boy. This one's has a big lexicon at the back. With all that, it's close to 750 pages, it looks like. This one's going to be a big one to get through. And it's not the only big one I have. I'm going out on a limb with some of these big ones. This is one big one. I've heard a lot of buzz about how good it is, so I'm really looking forward to it. But we also have this big boy. I mentioned this recently that I've had it sitting around for a while. This is... Leviathan Wakes, first book of The Expanse from James S.A. Corey. Um, huge space opera type deal, and it's a big boy. There's a lot of big books here this month, but it's looking like I'm going to have a lot of time in September to read, or at least that's what it's looking like so far. We'll see if that actually holds, but if it does, I should be able to move through some of these pretty quickly. I think I'm going to start Leviathan Wakes here this weekend, so that's my plan anyway. I, I don't know. That's my plan. Who knows? Then we have a sci-fi military novel about soldiers fighting the war against Mars. And this is Cameron Hurley's The Light Brigade. I, other than that, I don't know a lot about this. I know it's sci-fi military. I It's not terribly long. 350 pages, roughly. So this one I should be able to move through quickly. I was going to read this last year in sci-fi September and didn't get to it. So I am very excited to dive into it now at this time. But yeah, let's see. The Light Brigade, it's what soldiers fighting the war against Mars call the ones who come back. Different. Grunts in the corporate cores get busted down into light to travel to and from interplanetary battlefronts. Everyone is changed by what the cores must do in order to break them down. Those who survive learn to stick to the mission brief no matter what actually happens during conflict, combat. So yeah, it sounds like a fun one, or at least a very interesting, exciting one. We'll see. Okay. I have a sci-fi sci non-fiction book here. And it's a big boy. It's over, it's about, it's over 550 pages. But this is Secrets of the Force, the complete, uncensored, unauthorized oral history of Star Wars. <laughs> up until whenever this book was published. So, up through 2021. So, it's already out of date. But that's okay. But, I like reading these oral histories. They always It's always fun because they have it broke into like different people's thoughts on everything. And it's funny because they're talking about the same thing, but they are not agreeing on details. I just find that fascinating. There's been a couple... I mean, Daisy Jones and the Six would be a good fictionalized version of that, where it's a lot of different talking heads and nobody's really agreeing on it, even though they're talking about the same thing. And being a huge Star Wars fan, I am excited for this. This, I think, I'll fly through pretty quickly once I get started on it. Which, that might not be till mid-month, but... I have one book here that is not sci-fi. I'm going to do that one first, and then we'll get into these other four books I have on the TBR yet. So this one is because I planned poorly. When I scheduled up my Neil Gaiman novels reread, I was doing one every other month. And September, I should have waited with Stardust for September, because even though Stardust is not sci-fi, it at least has star, so it kind of plays with science fiction a little bit. 
Instead, we have his one with Terry Pratchett, Good Omens. And yeah, I know it has really nothing to do with sci-fi, but that's, it is what it is. I, I miscalculated on all that and I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't going to do sci-fi September and then I decided I would just because I had a bunch of sci-fi piling up. But that'll be a nice one in the middle, a nice little palette cleanser if I need a break from my sci-fi for a little bit. We have an angry robot novel called The Outside by Ada Hoffman. And I love this cover. I mean, look at this thing. It's so freaking bizarre. And that's one thing. Angry Robot, their cover artists are phenomenal. I have yet to see a bad cover from them. They always put all this amazing effort into these covers. But here we have super intelligent AI gods rule the galaxy. Their algorithm algorithms determine the rewards you reap before and after death. But the gods give and the gods take away. And Yasira has never been good at gods. So we got gods and we got space and we've got here be monsters, it says. So yeah, this should be a fun one. This is like the last... I kind of was buying, I bought a bunch of Angry Robot books, then took a little break and then bought a bunch more. This is the last one of that first wave. The other ones in that first wave was Shrouded Loyalties, which you all know how I felt about that. And if not, you can go watch the review because that was a freaking pain of a book. And 16th Watch, which I thought was fine. Actually, I have reviews for both of those. Maybe I should link those. I'll link those down below if you care, if you want to see what I thought of those. So this one is hopefully going to be closer to 16th watch than it was to shroud loyalties at least in my opinion but we'll see this is more of a techno thriller but techno is sci-fi in my opinion so we're gonna call it count it and this is john mars the minders i have been really getting into john mars i read the one last year and loved it i read the passengers earlier this summer and really enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to this one being kind of tied into the same world. Since the other two were kind of tied to the same world, I'm sure this one probably is too. But let's see. It says, Five ordinary people have been selected to become minders, transformed by a revolutionary medical procedure. They are the latest weapon in thwarting cyber terrorism. The country's most classified information has been taken offline and turned into genetic code implanted inside their heads. Together, the five know every secret, the truth behind every government lie, conspiracy theory, and cover-up. In return, they're given the chance to leave their problems behind in a blank slate to start their lives anew. So yeah, it sounds fun. It sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. If it goes like the passengers, I'll probably devour this one pretty quick. So that one shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I'm going to try to get back into Pierce Brown's Red Rising. I read Red Rising last December and never got back to it. But here's book two, Golden Sun. I am I liked book one. I'm looking forward to book two. This is probably one I might not get to. I don't know. I don't have book three yet. And I have this terrible feeling this is going to be a cliffhanger ending. And I... I know there's more books after the three, but the three are kind of were their own thing. And then they did these other ones. So they kind of continued it. So if I can get the three, I might just do that. Problem is, is I got the first two in this smaller size. And I can't find the smaller size for the third one because these were British. These were like English, England copies or something. They came over from England. I'm just, I'm like, I keep looking for that third book in that size and I haven't been able to find it. So hopefully... That's lower priority on the totem pole for the month, but I'm hoping I can squeeze it in. And then we have Annalie Newitz's The Future of Another Timeline. I've been wanting to read this one for a while. I mean, if you can rewrite the past, you can control the future. So, you know, it's time travel, all that fun stuff. I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. So... That is my Sci-Fi September TBR. I'm excited to dive into almost all of these, which is a rare thing. I'm not really struggling this month. I have a lot of my wanted to get to. So what's on your TBRs for September? Are you reading a lot of Sci-Fi too? Do any of these sound like books you'd enjoy? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, 
keep turning pages.